Hey everybody, this is a Lego Jurassic World set. It's Indominus Rex versus Ankylosaurus. That's right, new dino. Well, technically it's two new dinos because this is a new version of the Indominus, as we'll see up close momentarily. Uh, the set comes with five minifigures, but most of what you build here is the gyrosphere station or you know, starting and ending platform. Let me actually cover this first and just get it out of the way quickly. The sign for the right here is nice. It looks pretty perfect to me, just uses three stickers on there. The trees, uh, well, they're kind of square in cross-section or maybe cross-shaped in cross-section. You notice that they're wobbling about. That's because they are designed to fall down. The idea is that your ankylosaurus may come around with its bulbous tail and hit this thing and knock one of those over. And that works perfectly fine. There's another trigger back here. And that, yeah, it just works. I just think that the trees themselves look... Uh, kind of weak. The foliage is, is fine, but the trunks are, yeah, kind of weak. The platform, meanwhile, is actually uh, pretty good. It feels like, uh, well, it's giving me some nostalgia for the Jurassic World game that I played through. You know, it, it's miniaturized, obviously, but I mean, the platform is, by Lego standards, huge. The amount of space they give you there for minifigs is, is immense. I mean, you can put so many figures there, something they don't usually do. Usually they just, you know, make figure space as small as reasonably possible. The stairs here and the handrails, that's nice. The little bit of foliage out front representing some vines and everything. These details along the side, there's more building that goes into that than I feel is absolutely necessary. I one tiny little hair there, there we go. Uh, this little detail on the side is nice. The roof sections are simple, but they work. Little turnstile there that can actually spin around. That's the spot where you get your tickets or present. Yeah, I guess it's where you get your tickets. And looking at this around the back, there's the seat for the single attendant. You know, normally this would probably have multiple attendants in it. And there would be an additional canopy uh, out in the, the waiting area and probably some other stuff, some other decorations. But I mean, this, this whole thing I feel is done better than it needs to be. Folks who like the gyrosphere concept from Jurassic World, I think we'll like this. And uh, fans of the game, especially, I think, who have been immersed in this space a little bit more than just folks who have seen the, the movie or movies, uh, will will get it more. And then you got the little launch. So Gyrosphere, same as it's been in the past, got some weird things going on just visually because my, my filters, don't worry about the, the rainbow effects. Those don't actually show up, but uh, they pretty much perfected this design the first time around and they haven't messed it up since. This actually does have, <laughs> you're not gonna see it because it, let's see, let me see, a little bit from the top, there you go. This does have a, a, a little uh, console down there with a single sticker on it, but you know, this just holds onto a single figure inside. You can open it up, put a figure in there, close it back up, and then it'll actually roll and it'll mostly keep the figure in an upright position. Using it with the platform here, what you do is you just put it in the little jaws back here. They have a knob that is not bright red, but it does have a sticker on it just to make sure that folks who maybe weren't paying too much attention while building this will remember that that is something that you can do because it is it is kind of camouflage back here. Like I think it would be easy to forget about that if you're not paying too much attention to it. I'm just thinking of, of a kid with, with limited attention span, excited to play with the dinosaurs and everything. Well, you turn this and it launches the gyrosphere, except you gotta do it a little bit faster than that. And it comes out over here and it works perfectly fine. Uh, rolling this back up is is fine. You have to hold it, you have to do it yourself, but I think that's fine. And then, you know, you ultimately bring it around the back and bring it onto the, the little holder. You can spin it around if you want in place. The whole thing just it just works. All right, Indominus Rex. We've gotten an Indominus Rex before, but this one is different. This one has a different color, different pattern, and different arms. Only slightly, though. It's a little bit cheaper. I appreciate that the print is in silver. I think they're trying to go for the suggestion of the uh, chameleon-like nature of it. Maybe it's kind of going into its, its active camo form. <laughs> But, I mean, it's mostly using the same molds as before. I think a lot of people are most interested in the differences between this and the original version. So, here they are together. And again, the main difference is just that color. 
The new one has a little bit more of an evil eye, but it's also a little bit more cartoony feeling to me compared to, sorry about the squealing of the plastic on plastic, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like this was a little bit more believable, just not quite as mad looking. The articulation is mostly the same between these. I mean, you know, the jaw opens up and closes. It has a couple of spots where it will stay. So fully open part and then closed up. Uh, nice teeth, you know, they're, they're colored well. You can turn the neck side to side. You can also bring it up and down quite a bit because this was originally designed or based on the, the general design of Lego's uh, Jurassic Park inspired T-Rexes, which were originally intended to be more upright and how they walked around and everything. So again, legs go forward and back. The tail is able to rotate like so. Arms go up and down. And here's the biggest functional difference. This one has these little open studs in the hands facing to the side, but then this is all just one piece. It's dual molded with the, the fingertips, the claws being a, a different plastic rather than a print on there. But yeah, that's that compared to the old one, which actually had the ability to rotate the wrists, which I thought was really cool because you could hold things like this. You could kind of, have it yeah you know, there's just different expressions i feel that you could get out of the old one that you really can't with the new but ultimately this was more expensive the new one is cheaper to make so hopefully they pass some of the savings on to us even though it did cost a bit to make the new molds but that's the indominus rex for you just wanted to compare those two and let's see that most of it is the same except for a palette swap the ankylosaurus meanwhile is very new to us and it has a bit of a different construction than we've seen on any of lego's dinosaurs you actually put the body together the upper part of it the nougat colored part and the tan on the bottom well those are actually separate pieces you put those together and there are some technic pieces inside to accommodate the legs you actually assemble that stuff so that's cool you also assemble the tail onto this with a frictionless or minimum friction joint. So you can swing the tail back and forth <laughs> like that. And it's kind of kind of rubbery, has a little, little weight to it, but it's kind of rubbery. So, you know, when it hits things, it just feels appropriately like a thud, not a, not a clang. Uh, it has some studs on top so you can put riders on it if you want. Minimal articulation with this, just the legs. They go forward and back, that's it. Uh, there's a little bit of a difference in color between this color here and the body color. Basically, that's paint or print versus plastic color. Uh, there's also a very slight difference between this hard plastic and this rubbery material, but that's very difficult to see by comparison. Uh, and the gray is plastic, so that's all dual molded in all the way out to the beak there. So that's good. Can't move the head around, though. There's no articulation there. But hey. It's an ankylosaurus. Hopefully they'll use this set of molds again in the future to give us some different colors too. Taking a look at figures, here are Owen and Claire, of course. And uh, well, they're Owen and Claire. I personally don't see anything particularly noteworthy between these two. I think they're just perfectly fine figures for what they are, uh, for who they're intended to represent. Got the alternate faces as well for both of them, which just seem Useful, I think, for a lot of the scenarios that these would be in as characters. So, yeah, this is this is all good to me. Here are Zack and Gray. Uh, Zack there on the left, to me, will always look like a hobbit. I think there's, there's just no way around that in Lego form, you know. Uh, the print looks really strong for his torso at first with most of the lines. But then when you look right up at the top, right there, the, the skin tone, you know, is a bit thin. Incidentally, there is a misprint. Actually, there are most multiple misprints on the box. They show Zach's torso based in white rather than gray. But ironically, they depict gray on the right appropriately. Yeah, just a funny little thing. Maybe they'll fix it someday. Maybe they won't. Last but not least, this is Park Worker, the figure. I really like figures like this because, you know, you swap out the face Maybe put hair on one or another, you know, just do a little bit of variation and it's a massable type of, of figure, you know, doesn't need to have a name. You can give 
a figure like this your own backstory and everything. And it's just, you know, normal folks. You need normal folks wherever. You know, in this case, he's Jurassic World specific, but you need plenty of normal Jurassic World specific folks around a Jurassic World exhibit and park. So I'm, I'm happy for this figure. Also particularly happy to get this cap in brown. That's nice. Here are the leftover spare parts, including one of these semi-flexible tube pieces that's useful. And then this is the spent sticker sheet. That's not too many stickers for a set of this size, I think. So check it out. This set has 500 and some odd pieces, and it costs a cool $100 US. That gives it one of the most atrocious price to part ratios of all time for full boxed sets, you know? Not some uh, promotional figure pack or something like that. Uh, yeah, that price to part ratio is insane. But, of course it's going to be insane because the set comes with two large animals. And those are the main draws of the set, aren't they? However, they did put in all this build to try to give you a lot more stuff. And I do feel like most people aren't going to care about <laughs> these builds compared to the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs are the big draw here. But I really appreciate the effort and the budget that Lego assigned to the builds here because this needed to be made, I feel. This little part, I mean, it, it looks okay. I would have been much happier if the, the tree trunks looked cooler than they do. Uh, but yeah, this kind of needed to be made. Would have been nice if it had one more gyrosphere, uh, especially since we do get both Zack and Gray in this. So they could be, you know, riding in separate ones since this isn't a two-seater. If it was a two-seater, that may have been even more appropriate here. That's the one thing that I think is a little bit off. Otherwise, I'm really happy with this. And it's easy to expand upon it, to extend it, you know, get more roller coaster track. Uh, the uh, Creator 3-in-1 roller coaster set would have been a perfect donor for additional pieces to, to add to this a bit. You know, stuff like that uh, you know, is, is, is available to us as options to bring even more goodness to a starting point like this. Also, some seats and stuff, like there's that big platform area again. It's just a big platform area. I don't mind it. I'm always complaining that LEGO doesn't give us enough space in their structures to actually put figures. So I'm not going to complain about that, but it is empty and could use some, some extra stuff put in there. The changes to Indominus, uh, I don't know, I, I kind of like that, that white one just because it, it stood out so much. But I do very much appreciate the silver printing on this one. And I think I like the print pattern on this one better than the old. I will definitely miss the rotatable hands without question. I'm glad they put the stud in there, though. That helps a lot. It says you can still hold on to a person. And I'll take, oops, I'll take Park Worker, the figure, because he feels like a good donor for this purpose. You can do that. That's the main thing you want to do. You want to be able to grab a person. So it can still do that. So I'm, I'm satisfied with that. Between the dinosaurs, again, I hope, I have high hopes amongst fans of dinos. But this is the main draw. I think a lot of kids will go for this because it's big and bad, you know. But this, I know that I, I know for a fact that there are a lot of fans of herbivores out there, and certainly LEGO has not given enough time and budget and product, pieces of plastic, to the herbivore world. So I will always celebrate the addition of new ones to the system. And this one I think is perfectly fine. They need to make more with different colors though. But I like this color uh, set. Uh, the tail is done well. The build was surprising and interesting. You know, it's a little bit, again, more complex than the, than the usual. I'm happy with that. A little bit of a uh, color match problem that I actually don't even really mind, to be honest, because they're both earth tones. They are similar enough that uh, it looks like intentional variation, even though it isn't. It is not. I'm telling you, it is not. Somebody will say, no, Jang, it's supposed to... No, it's not. It's supposed to be the same color. They don't, they don't do little little changes like that. Um, 
But yeah, overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the thing. $100, that's a lot. No matter which way, no matter how you look at it. But I feel like it's in line with expectations for a set with two big animals like this. I would love to see it cheaper, but I think that it will sell just fine because of these animals and the number of figures as it is. There you go. Got a pure build for this. I've got a speed build for this. If you want to see how it all went together, especially the platform, which is where most of the building is, or the the Ankylosaurus, like I said, there is some building involved with that. You can check out one of those. I've linked to them in the video description, the respective channels, and also you'll see them in the end screen. So thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon.